Hey, honey. Yeah. Yosef, how are you doing, buddy? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The Government Operations Committee for Monday, March the 20th, 2023, will come to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Representatives Bolso, Carr, Chisholm, Clemens, Crawford, Eldridge, Faison, Hakeem, Hemmer, Jones, Keesling, Kumar, Lafferty, Littleton, Martin, McCalman, Rudder, Vice Chairman Reedy, Chairman Reagan. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Members, do we have personal orders today? Announcements? You're recognized, uh, Chairman Keesling. Thank you, Chairman. Appreciate it. And yes, we do. I have a special guest today. Max is back. I'm referring to Mr. Max Jones, my grandson back that, down there, up in front of us. And it's great to have him here. Fentress County Schools are on summer break. So that means he is with us today and he'll be shadowing me throughout the week. And I love having him around. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, I think the good chairman meant spring break. <laughs> yeah, if it's summer break, boy, I'm way behind. <laughs> Any other personal orders? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll go into our regular calendar. Item number one, House Bill 154, which is being run by uh, Speaker Marsh. We have a motion and a second for a positive recommendation. You are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Much. This bill is a jobs bill and promotes employee ownership. This means keeping Tennessee jobs in Tennessee. This legislation creates short and long-term incentives to convert a Tennessee business to employee ownership. Instead of these businesses retiring from business and selling to companies that will take their jobs and revenue out of state, this bill creates an opportunity to create employee owners and keep Tennessee jobs in Tennessee and give employees purchasing power. This bill provides tax relief to small business owners converting to an employee owner model. This business owner will receive a tax credit to help offset the cost involved in employee ownership conversions. This credit, along with the other incentives, encourages business owners to choose employee ownership rather than selling to an out-of-state buyer and these taking these jobs out of the state. With that, I will answer any questions. Members, you've heard an explanation of the bill. Do we have questions of our sponsor? Uh, Chairman Lafferty, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I like the underlying concept of this, I do have a curiosity. I think I saw something in the summary language about uh, ECD going out and promoting this. It set a light off in my head, sorry. Uh, if we do encourage somebody to do this and it works out poorly since the state of Tennessee has gone out and made an effort to find folks that were willing to convert their companies, does that also put the state of Tennessee in any kind of liability situation? I know it's it's probably not, but just curious. You're recognized, sir. In my opinion, it wouldn't. I think that what Bill is suggesting that they maybe put on their website that this is available as an option. Thank you for that. Thank you, Chair. Other questions of our sponsor. Members, as a reminder, this bill is before us because it involves rule promulgation. We will recommend approval or disapproval. We have no, no power beyond that on this bill. Uh, we've had a motion for a positive recommendation. And, and a second, do we have any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of sending House Bill 154 to Finance Ways and Means, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Bill moves out to finance ways and means. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next on our agenda, item number two, House Bill 1503 by Chairman Vaughn. We have a motion and a second for a positive recommendation. Chairman Vaughn, you are recognized for an explanation of your bill, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What House Bill 1503 uh, is asking you to consider is the creation of our own no surprise billing law for the state. Uh, what we saw when the Federal No Surprise Act came through that it created an imbalance in the, in the uh, marketplace. 
and we're looking to restore it and create our own system here, which the federal law contemplates and allows. Members, you've heard an explanation of the bill. Do we have, by the way, this bill is before us because it uh, requires uh, promulgation of rules. Do we have questions of our sponsor? See, see, seeing none, thank you. We have the motion on the table with positive recommendation. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of sending House Bill 1503 to hang on, Finance, Ways, and Means, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Bill moves out. Thank you, Mr. It. Chairman and Committee. Finance, Ways, and Means. Thank you. Next on our agenda, item number three, House Bill 391 by Chairman Sapicki. We have a motion and a second on the bill. Uh, Chairman Sapicki, you're recognized for an explanation of your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Committee. This uh, House Bill 391 requires the Tennessee Board of Regents to develop and administer a two-year pilot program beginning in academic year 23-24 for the purpose of awarding grants to students enrolled in non-degree workforce training programs identified by TBR. Mm -hmm. Happy to answer Mr. any questions, Mr. Chairman. Members, this bill is before us because it involves promulgation of rules. Do we have questions of the sponsor? Seeing none, we have positive recognition in a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we will vote to send this bill to Finance, Ways, and Means. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Bill moves out to Finance, Ways, and Means. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Item number four on our calendar, House Bill 521, is rolled one week. Item number five on our calendar. Okay, let me, let me get the number out first. 1097. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Representative Parkinson, you are recognized for an explanation of your bill, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This bill creates independent study options for high school students. Those students that are working, those students that are away because they may be in the entertainment business, those students that are hospitalized for long periods of time, or those students that may have become pregnant or with child and need a different option for their education purposes. Members, you've heard an explanation. This bill is before us for rules, and it is traveling with an amendment that requires no action on this in this committee. Do we have questions of the sponsor? We have a motion second, and a second for a positive recommendation. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Uh, We're voting to send this bill to counter and rules. All in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Bill moves out to counter and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Committee. Thank you, Representative Parkinson. Item number six on our agenda, House Bill 1103 is rolled one week. Sorry. Item number seven. House Bill 1490 by uh, Leader Clemens. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Before, and this... you, before you start, sir, announcement to the committee. Uh, although we are not the standing committee for this, and we can only recommend approval or disapproval, this is the first committee this bill is heard in, and therefore uh, an amendment is appropriate. With that said, Representative Clemens, do you have an amendment you wish to ha write, uh, add to the bill? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, amendment barcode 3845 makes the bill. All right, members, that is the correct barcode. Second. We have a motion and a second on the amendment. Uh, all in favor of adding the amendment to the bill indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The amendment is on the bill. Uh, Leader Clemens, you are recognized to explain your bill as amended, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. This bill is about transparency and fairness. Last year, the Dep Tennessee Department of Revenue provided us information about how many corporations in Tennessee are paying zero in the franchise and excise tax. That is, of course, our state corporate income tax. The answer was that more than 60% are paying nothing. It's pretty jarring to learn that. We also asked specifically about highly profitable companies, and the answer was that 27% of companies that report more than $1 billion in taxable income to the federal government pay nothing in Tennessee. Now, we don't know which companies are paying nothing because the state law shields that information from public view. This bill would require publicly traded companies to report what they pay or don't pay to the public so we can better understand how our current tax code is working for the people of Tennessee. As an example, we know from an ITEP report, and that's the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, 
from that report that three Tennessee companies paid no federal taxes in 2020. That's FedEx, Community Health Systems, and Unum Group. Current law doesn't allow us to know what those companies paid or did not pay in Tennessee. In 2021, Amazon alone avoided more than $5 billion in federal taxes, according to ITEP. We don't know if they pay anything in Tennessee or not. Now, I talk to small business owners, and I know that our small business owners are paying their taxes. We also hear that Tennessee is a low tax state. But in truth, we have the second highest sales tax in the country, and we're only one of the states that taxes groceries. Regressive taxes like these, paid by working families, every working family, make up more than 60% of all state tax collections. Business taxes only account for about 23%. Tennessee's families are carrying the load of funding our infrastructure and public services that corporations benefit from the most, making record profits seemingly every year. Meanwhile, our schools arguably remain underfunded, our roads are filled with potholes and have traffic problems, our public services are woefully underfunded, including those at the Department of Children's Services. So actually, Tennessee is a high tax state for families. It's only a low tax state for big corporations. Again, committee, this bill is about fairness. There are no loopholes for families buying groceries. There are no loopholes for parents buying back to school clothes. There are no loopholes for property owners paying higher rates to make up for corporations not paying a dime. This bill does not raise taxes on anyone. It simply provides some transparency so the hardworking people of Tennessee who pay their taxes will know which big corporations are paying what they owe and which are not. This is about fairness and transparency. Thank you, committee. Members, you've heard an explanation, and the floor is open for question. Uh, Representative Hakeem, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I'm sure you'll let me know whether I'm in line or not on my question. Uh, it, is it feasible for our attorney to share with me whether it's the state or the federal government? I'm going to use the term that shields some large uh, companies from their what they're not doing in the state of Tennessee when it comes to tax paying taxes. Would that be a legitimate question you feel, sir? I, as I understand it, you're asking us to go out of session to address your question to the legal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any objections? We are out of session, and you're legal. You're recognized. And did you do you need the question repeated? No. All right. You're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Doug Garrett with the Office of Legal Services. Look closer. Um, Representative Hakeem, there, I'm, I may have to get you an answer on that, but there, I know that the reference to corporations includes the excise tax law of 1999, and then um, which is state state law, and then also the Internal Revenue Code of 1986. <laughs> um, I'm again, I'm not certain that that would fall under either the state or the federal tax code or both, um, but I will get you that answer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Follow Thank you, question. Attorney. We have any other questions of legal while we're out of session? Yeah. Representative Balzo, you're recognized. Balzo, I'm sorry. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, my question is for the sponsor. I did not All right. oh, mean to ask that question. For legal. Okay. Any questions for legal? Seeing none, we're back in session. And Representative Balzo, you're recognized for question of the sponsor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Leader Clemens, if I understood the explanation, this bill only affects uh, filings from publicly traded companies, in particular what franchise and excise taxes those publicly traded companies paid in Tennessee. My question simply is, given that this bill is affecting only publicly traded corporations, isn't that information already available through the company's 10Q and 10K filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission? You're recognized, Mr. Sponsor. No, not to my knowledge. I believe it's the state law shields those filings. Follow-up, sir? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Other questions of the sponsor? Representative, pardon me, Chairman Lafferty, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Sponsor, the taxes that are paid by corporations, you are aware that those are ultimately passed on to consumers and therefore a tax on everyone that uh, is also participating in the economy, correct? You're recognized, Mr. Sponsor? Thank you for that question. What I'm familiar with is uh, I think that's the explanation generally provided uh, as an incentive to cut taxes or not pay taxes. But 
if you take a look at the CEO executive bonuses, I think um, I think a lot of the money that's being saved is going into uh, the C-suite bonuses on an annual basis as well. You recognize Chairman Lafferty? So is this a bill to get disclosure from the corporations about their taxes or to expose the uh, C-suite recipients of any of these bonuses? <laughs> Sponsors recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This bill is all about fairness and transparency. This is simply for us to know who is paying and who is not paying their fair share of state taxes. Again, Chairman Lafferty. Last one. The the um, corporations, the salaries that they provide, the goods that they purchase in this state, they pay sales taxes on all of those. So again, they are paying taxes, correct? Mr. Sponsor, you recognize? I know their employees are paying their taxes to the extent the corporations are paying any taxes. I think, you know, if they're buying any products in the state of Tennessee, they certainly, I assume, would be. But um, we're talking about franchise and excise taxes here. Just follow up. I just wanted to to say that they're not paying taxes is, I don't think, 100 uh, percent accurate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Other questions to sponsor? Uh, Kumar. Chairman Kumar, you recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the intent of this bill about transparency is good. However, the implication that those who don't pay taxes are not paying their fair share. Fair share is a rather subjective matter that uh, the interpretation of that changes with each change in administration. I think they are definitely paying their legal share. Those are the laws we have. And if they are following them, that is uh, uh, every corporation's responsibility to pay as little tax as they can following the law. So I think the problem is with the law, not with the fact that just because somebody does not pay uh, taxes, they are doing something wrong. Uh, the important thing is they are following the law, and these large corporations have to, uh, considering their large departments and accounting and so on, there is a lot of information available along those lines. So I would like to say that as a pro-business state, we need to realize that it is okay to pay their legal share, not the fair share as defined by somebody. And that interpretation differs with everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, response, Mr. Sponsor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and yeah, your point's well taken, uh, Chairman Kumar. I think, you know, whether you call it uh, paying their legal share or their fair share, um, you know, that could be a subjective opinion. And I'm not asking us to uh, increase or create a new tax on these entities. I simply am asking for the disclosure of what taxes they are paying according to the law. Um, if, if, if anybody wants to increase, you know, um, remove any of the exemptions or tax credits, then that's certainly their prerogative. This bill simply seeks to see which ones are paying at all, whether you consider their legal share or their fair share. I think those are um, equal in my mind, um, because when you look at the percentage of the profits and the percentage of the, of the amount of money flowing through those, I think it's a fair question. And, and, and people across Tennessee shouldn't, shouldn't, should have a good understanding of which companies are paying anything in franchise and excise taxes. And of course I recognize under the Tennessee law, seven, 17 different types of entities are exempt from franchise and excise taxes. And there's three types of exemptions and credits for which many corporations qualify for. And I don't think um, I'm necessarily attempting to, uh, well, I know I'm not attempting to change those or alter those anyway. I just, I think it's the public should know what corporations are paying. That's it. Do we have other questions to sponsor? Chair will exercise privilege then. Uh, Mr. Sponsor, for the record, Again, you stated this, but let's be very clear. This is not increasing any tax, correct, sir? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. This is not creating any new tax or anything. It's just simply a disclosure form. That's it. Other questions of the sponsor? Seeing none, we have a motion for a positive recommendation to go to finance ways and means with this uh, as amended. Any questions on the, on the motion? Seeing none, we're voting for all those in favor of a positive recommendation for finance, ways, and means indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Aye. Whoa. Nays have it. Uh, it still moves out with a negative recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Next on the agenda, item number eight, House Bill 747 by Representative Jones. And again, members, as a reminder, this is not the standing committee. This bill is before us because we're the first committee in line and it involves uh, taxes, excise, revenue, promulgating rules to implement. Uh, with that explanation, Mr. Sponsor, uh, but did we get a motion on that? Motion on the bill. We have a motion and a second on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. You're recognized for an explanation of your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, today, a cashier at Walmart in Nashville would have to work more than 823 years to earn what the company CEO, Doug McMillan, was paid last year. Similarly, a crew team member at McDonald's in Nashville would have to work 865 years to earn what the company paid its CEO, Chris Kapinski, in 2021. This bill is, is, is to look at the system of income inequality that Tennesseans are subsidizing by our taxpayers having to subsidize these corporations and pay for SNAP and tenure, ten care benefits because of the shortcomings, shortcomings of these corporations. And when a big corporation has a huge disparity in pay between workers and the CEO, it's Tennessee taxpayers who pay for health and food assistance for their workers. We are subsidizing some of the largest corporations and most profitable, profitable corporations in the history of our nation and it would be completely unnecessary if these companies respected their workers and paid a dignified wage. I wanna share some statistics to kind of help make this point. Um, according to a report by the US Government Accountability Office, um, more than 5.7 million Medicaid enrollees and 4.7 million SNAP recipients worked full time for 50 or more weeks in 2018 and earned wages so low that they qualified for these benefits. Researchers sent a questionnaire to state Medicaid and SNAP agencies and analyzed data from 15 such agencies across 11 states, including Tennessee. Each agency reported the 25 most common employers of Medicaid enrollees and SNAP recipients. Among the 15 agencies, Walmart was in the top four employers of program beneficiaries in each and every one. In Tennessee, the top companies employing workers who qualify for federal assistance are Walmart, McDonald's, FedEx, Dollar General, Kroger, and Amazon. This CEO pay disparity tax begins to reform our broken state tax code by ensuring that large successful corporations either pay their workers or pay a fair share of taxes. This bill does not tell companies that we're not going after the CEO pay saying that, you know, if you, want, you can pay your CEO however much you want, but if it has to be parallel and equal um, in, in proportion to how much you pay workers. This bill would only tax businesses that pay their CEO more than a hundred times the employee and it would increase excise taxes by 0.1%. Um, if you look at the fiscal note from, um, from our office here, um, this bill would generate more than $8 million in revenue for our state um, in fiscal year 24 to 25. Uh, just a 0 0.1 tax increase um, on these businesses that are paying obscene and immoral amounts of wealth to their CEOs and paying starvation work um, wages to their employees. Um, Tennesseans on both sides of the aisle are concerned about this issue. Um, according to a national survey, uh, more than 52% of Republicans and 66% of Democrats are concerned with the excessive income inequality between CEOs and um, workers. And so this is a bill that is, is not about left or right. It's, an issue of, it's a moral issue of right and wrong. Um, we should no longer subsidize these businesses, um, these models of business that create obscene amounts of wealth for a few at the top, while our working class constituents in my district and in your district are, are suffering. Um, and we as a state are paying the cost and burden. Um, and with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll submit the bill and, and take any questions. Members, you've heard an explanation of the bill. A reminder, this committee is not the standing committee for this bill. We cannot kill it or <laughs> help it survive. We can only recommend approval or disapproval. Uh, that said, you've heard the explanation. We, we have a, uh, a positive uh, a motion for, for the bill to be before us. Uh, Chairman Lafferty, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. People do get paid a lot of money in this country. Some people don't get paid enough money in this country. Folks that don't get paid enough, uh, some of the cashiers that you cited, do you believe that those folks are locked in those jobs for the entirety of their lives? Sponsor recognized. Thank you. Um, what I know is that these are the workers who are on the front lines and who brought us through the pandemic and their wages remain stagnant while these CEOs got um, bonuses and increased salary rates. That's what I know is that we have a system that keeps people locked into cycles of poverty. And so people there, we, we don't, the American dream that, that my grandparents talked about was that you could, you could go up, but it, we look, we see our system now, there are all these barriers and blockades from helping people advance their lives to live lives of dignity. 
Um, and we see this massive in income inequality that, that did not exist when many of these members on the committee were my age. We did not see this massive, obscene amount of wealth inequality. This is a rather new phenomenon we're seeing in, in our country. And so people are stuck and trapped. Um, these are my constituents, your constituents in Knoxville as well, who are suffering in these low wage poverty jobs. I'm um, working two jobs trying to make ends meet. I'm working two jobs for uh, full time jobs for part time wages. It is immoral. And, and, and I think this is something that we can agree across the political spectrum. We don't want to see our, our constituents stuck in these in these stagnant positions, but that they should be able to to advance themselves. And, 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 and keeping people with these poverty wages where they have to rely on government assistance programs does not do that. In fact, it harms our constituents. Follow up, sir. My apologies. I had a hard time following that answer. Do you think that folks is very simple? Do you think that the folks in these cashier positions are stuck there for a lifetime? You recognize sponsor? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, many of them are. Yes, Mr. Lafferty, uh, Representative Lafferty. Many people are trapped in these low wage poverty jobs. And, and because they're, they're, they have to choose between paying for their groceries or paying for their prescriptions. These are what we're dealing with. The constituents of my district, a working class district, who don't have any decision but to work at the Dollar General and the Walmart to try and feed their children. They are trapped in these jobs with these poverty wages. And as Dr. King said, we have a system that has socialism for the rich and rugged individualism for the poor. And that's what we're dealing with. Last follow-up, sir. Oh. All right, last follow-up. Um, I'd wanted one, one or two more, but I'll try and make this. Quick. I'll come back to you. So, it uh, free market capitalism is the only economic device that mankind has come up with, where I take what I work for, I hand it to a vendor, the vendor hands me some product in return, and we both say thank you when the transaction is over. To say it is immoral is wrong because both people agree to the transaction and both people have options to go different directions if they choose to do so. Back to FedEx, since you referenced them, a man that risks everything to grow a company to what he's created today, is he not deserving of as big a paycheck as he can get? Or do you just totally believe that we should ditch free market capitalism and go toward a socialist society? Mr. Sponsor, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's, those are two questions, so I'll, I'll take both of them. The first question is, is that what is immoral is that we as a state are subsidizing these corporations. So it is not free market capitalism because we as a state are paying, as I cited from the government, U.S. Government Accountability Office, a nonpartisan office, more than 5.7 million Medicaid enrollees and 4.7 million SNAP recipients qualify for federal assistance. People who are working full-time jobs, we are subsidizing their benefits as a state. That is wrong. So that is not capitalism. That is socialism for these corporations where we're giving welfare to them and subsidizing their gaps that they're paying their workers 725 poverty wages while their CEO makes billions. That is immoral. Um, if I go to scripture, I go to Isaiah 10. Woe to those who pass unjust laws that hurt the poor and rob them of their rights. So if you want to talk about immoral Ms. or Ms. If, I'm, if that's Sponsor, socialism, I just want to quote that that is that, that is immoral. Mr. Sponsor, and we so, have other people that want to ask you questions. Okay. My, his second question is that my, my attack is not, I'm not attacking um, what you call free market capitalism. What I'm attacking is a system that is stacked against working class people to keep them locked in these, in these systems. These are the people who brought us through the pandemic. Once again, we called them heroes a few years ago, but now they're stuck in these jobs on the front lines, not getting any of the benefits. The people who work at Tyson, the people who work at Walmart, who got us through the pandemic, who are still struggling while their CEOs got tax um, excuse me, got bonuses, and the workers saw no increase in their wages, stagnant wages. That is immoral. Representative Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And and I, I want to thank you. I appreciate you you bringing up the part about in the in the past this didn't happen. And I know that this example is not a private company, but I, I know as a teacher, um, you know, years ago, teaching assistants make low salaries, but they always made enough to to live. And now what we're seeing with a lot of teachers assistants is they are also having to get SNAP benefits and that type of thing. You're, you're exactly right. We are not doing what we need to do for these people who are critical to to our way of life and to to our economy. So thank you. OK, the chair detected no question. Next on the list is uh, Representative Bolso. You recognize, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Jones, Tennessee has long recognized this legal doctrine called the business judgment rule, which is a presumption that officers and directors of corporations have a fiduciary duty 
to their stakeholders to act in the best interests of the corporation. And obviously it is the directors of corporations who set the salary for the CEO and the other officers of the corporation. Then the officers in turn set salaries for other employees in accordance with market conditions. And given that Tennessee has long recognized the fiduciary duties that directors and officers of corporations have to the employees and officers of those companies, why, in your view, is it appropriate for the Tennessee General Assembly to decide that it knows better than the officers and directors of the corporation what salary a CEO or any other employee of a company ought to be paid? You recognize, Mr. Sponsor? Thank you so much to my friend, Representative Bolso. I think if the state was not subsidizing the social service safety nets, if we weren't subsidizing 10 care and SNAP, then we shouldn't have a say. But it is our, our the state taxpayers who are paying for the shortcomings of these corporations. It is our taxpayers who are paying for these for, the, for their um, workers to have health care and to have food benefits and many other social safety net programs because the corporations are paying poverty wages. So we, we, we are already brought into this, whether we like it or not. Um, as I cited, I, I won't cite that statistic again, but millions of people who are working for these corporations rely on, on benefits from the government. So we are already involved. And these are people who work at Walmart, Tyson, um, FedEx, who we're paying for their benefits because the corporation is not paying um, dignified wages to their workers. Follow up, Representative Bolso. Other questions? You recognize, sir? To the sponsor, um, thank you. You know, when you say these people are stuck the, in these low-end jobs, I, I'm, I'm wondering who you think has them stuck. Because one of the great things about America in my adult life is that I've been in all kinds of tax brackets in my 20s, my 30s, my 40s. I've been all over the map. I've never been stuck. And what I'm hearing you say is Tennesseans, that the government is holding people hostage, that we have them stuck. So it, please clarify that for me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, that is incorrect. I'm saying that these corporations have them stuck. Um, if we look at economic mobility, um, when some of my friends like Representative Carr were my age, we had greater economic, Representative Reagan, when you were my age, there's greater economic mobility amongst people could buy a house, they could they could have, you know, children and a family. But now we see such economic stagnation recently where we have increasing wealth inequality um, that did not exist back when some of my colleagues here were, were my age. And so what we look at is this economic stagnation. And, and I think this is something, again, that transcends partisan divides, but it's something that we have to really have a serious conversation about, is why are people my age not able to purchase a house? Why are they stuck working at Walmart and then when they get off work, going to work at 7-Eleven, to working these full-time jobs for part-time wages just to, to feed their children? Um, just to make sure that the children have these tools they need to go to school. I mean, these are real stories that I've heard on the campaign show, talking to people, knocking doors. Um, people are stuck. And we look at the, the price of housing going up. We look at the, the price of the cost of living going up. And we don't see stat, um, wages rising for anybody except the corporate CEOs. And I, and I want to say, too, is that um, these CEOs don't live in Tennessee. The people who work for these businesses do. The people who work at Walmart live in our district. The people who work at FedEx live in our district. These CEOs um, are out living on the Cayman Islands. They're living their best life. And our constituents are suffering and, and paying the consequences. And so I ask my colleagues here, let's stand with our constituents, not these multinational corporations. This bill does not apply to small mom and pop businesses, but it applies to these big um, mega corporations, multinational corporations who could care less about Tennessee taxpayers and Tennesseans as a whole. A point of correction, sir. Uh, Fred Smith, the CEO of FedEx, in fact, lives in Memphis. I visited his home. Th thank you. I one example out of, out of millions, but I, I was referencing if we want to look at McDonald's, if we want to look at Walmart, if we want to look at, at Tyson Food. But if you want to find one example of a CEO who lives here, um, props to you, Chairman Reagan. Uh, do you have a follow-up, uh, Representative Martin? No, sir. Uh, Chairman Lafferty, you have a follow-up, sir? Representative Johnson, you're recognized? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm out of order. Uh, Chairman Kumar, you're recognized then, Representative Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Sponsor, I feel really concerned because this is basically inspiring and creating what is known as class warfare. 
you know, they are poor people stuck and rich people there. It's not a new ideology and it wants to punish success, but yet it doesn't help the person who you think is at the lower ring of the ladder. If somebody has the lower ring of ladder, does your bill do anything for them in the sense that does your bill propose how to give them a hand or how to give them a ladder they can climb up rather than basically uh, having this feeling that uh, uh, the system is just unfair. That is uh, people, not everybody, but it can be, you know, circumstances, but people, the decisions people have made, options available to them. But I really think, I, I really feel, I think class warfare is very, very divisive. It does not improve our society. It does not contain a better create a better conditions in our society. Uh, I really feel concerned and I don't think we should go there. If you have a proposal, how we could help those at the lowering of the society and is it in this bill kindly pointed out to me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sponsor, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, with all due respect to my friend, uh, Representative Kumar, um, I'm not inspiring class warfare. What I'm inspiring is a system that treats all members of our uh, beloved community with dignity. Um, if, if I can go a little bit to, to if, you, if you want to look at a moral example, because um, everyone here claims to talk about religion. Uh, uh, sir, may please, I, can please, I just use this example, please? please? It'll, it'll help make the point, Mr. Chair, to, to the comment about class warfare. Address this question, please. The, the, the question was about class warfare. But if we, look at, if we look at what Jesus was challenging, if we look at the Greek, when he said, blessed are the poor, he used the word patokos, which means those who have been made systemically poor. And that is what I'm challenging. This, is, this to me is a moral obligation for us to care for who those who Jesus called the least of these. And so I'm not inspiring any type of warfare or violence. What I'm inspiring is a system that treats people with dignity and equality um, when it comes to those who are actually advancing our society and it's working class people. And so um, Representative Kumar, when, when I hear your question as, as to, is there anything that we can do to address this system? Um, my proposal is a very meager 0.1% rate tax increase as a way to incentivize corporations that pay their CEO 100 times more than the average worker. This is a very meager ask to say that we as a state, we want to help our people get off social service programs. We, we don't want our people stuck on these, on these government assistance programs. We, we hear that all the time. This is, this is a bill that tr is trying to start that conversation with our corporate partners to say, will you pay your workers at least a less of a gap? We're not saying you got to cap your CEO salary. If you want to pay them all this money, at least let's not make it 100 times more than what the average worker is. The people who are actually bringing our community forward, the people who are actually working um, on the front lines of these businesses, they should be um, a part of the success as well. And, and that's what I'm saying. And so, I, again, I, I'm not inciting violence. I, I feel like your suggestion was, was hinting at I'm calling for violence or I'm calling for unrest. What I'm calling for is, is, a, is, is a community that's at peace with itself, Representative Kumar. I'm calling all of us to higher ground. This is about treating people with dignity. And, and so that people in my generation can have the same, the same type of America that my grandparents talked about when they talked about economic mobility. I just want to live in a, in a country like that. And I want my children to live in a country like that. Um, and I want all of our people to enjoy a part of the fruits of the labor and not just the, the few at the top. Follow up, uh, Chairman Kumar. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next on the list is Representative Johnson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I just wanted to point out, because um, FedEx was referenced, was just a couple of years ago, the single largest tax break in our budget was $21 million for FedEx. And um, I think it was the very next year we gave them a massive tax cut in jet fuel. And the reality is since 2017, we've given FedEx three big tax cuts in jet fuel and we have raised prices at the pumps for Tennesseans three times. I think it's important to note that when you're talking about that equality, those folks at the top are seeing massive tax breaks but um, the, the citizens in our state are not. Chairman Elder, you recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I know we've talked some about the uh, economic development here and the state putting money into companies. What would be the impact on Tennessee, say, if uh, FedEx decided to move out of state is say they I mean they these companies have the opportunity to go anywhere they want to and yeah. we're you know we're talking about minimum wages and smaller wages and everything like that but what would be the impact on a community say as Memphis say if FedEx decided it wanted to move to another state um, what 
what what would happen there? Also, the same with with the WalMarts and and all these companies. I mean, they they provide a number of jobs to the community, and we're talking about the the employees having to subsidize. But where would they be if they did not have that job to go to? What would be the impact there? And I, I think that's what we need to really look at. And also, as far as how much a CEO is paid, there's a most of these companies have a board that that governs that, and they that should be their deal to look at. But um, I think I think when we're looking at economic development, I mean ten, Tennessee has done a lot. And even with the Ford uh, project out in West Tennessee, uh, I mean, is there no not going to be any economic benefit to that area with Ford coming there? You recognize Mr. Sponsor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the first part is that um, I want, you had three parts of your question. I want to address each one by, one by one. This this bill would apply to businesses with nexus in, in Tennessee. So any business that has has b does business in the state of Tennessee. So it doesn't just have to be headquartered here or or be based here. But McDonald's they're not headquartered here, but they would apply to this legislation. Um, so I don't see foresee any of these companies completely abandoning um, Tennessee um, simply by a 0 0.1 tax increase to subsidize. The second part of your question, you said that the I stated that the worker subsidized these corporations. That is incorrect. I stated that the government subsidizes these corporations by paying for their SNAP and 10 care benefits because the company is paying them starvation wages. Uh, to your third point of economic development, um, this is not a bill that will hinder any economic development. A 0.1% tax increase, again, less than 1%, we're imposing on these, on these corporations multinational corporations to simply say that help us compensate for what we as a state are paying since you're paying poverty wages we're paying for the social safety net programs of your workers let us help us so that our taxpayers are not given the check we, we want we want to be reimbursed just a minimal amount from these corporations for what Tennesseans are already paying um, and have been paying and so um, this is not about hindering economic development it's not it's not about um, trying to stop any business or run them out of town it's simply saying that our taxpayers should not have to pay for the shortcomings of, of corporations. The government should not have to pay for people to stay on government benefits because corporations are paying starvation wages. That's all that this bill is saying. 0.1%, very meager. Uh, the question has been called. I have one more on the list. Would you like to withdraw and let one more? Uh, Chairman Clements, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate withdrawing the motion there. I, I just wanted to raise the point. I mean, I would encourage everybody, um, regardless of how you feel about this legislation, I, I would encourage everybody to take a look at the trends of economic mobility. Um, there is a little dispute across the political spectrum that economic mobility is decreasing in the United States. Um, you know, even a college education doesn't guarantee financial stability in this country. We have over 47 million people in the U.S. ages 16 to 64 whose annual incomes are below 200 percent of the poverty level. And that's not necessarily because of those individuals or because um, that's just that's the trend. And, and with health care costs increasing, inflation and everything going on, you, you really need to look at all the variables affecting upward economic mobility and, and look at those trends. And I, and I would just encourage this body, regardless how you feel about this legislation, to really consider how we can address that to provide opportunity for everybody. I would argue that the American dream um, isn't dead. It's just becoming more challenging for, for too many of Tennesseans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sponsor. Any response? Seeing none, uh, Chairman Faison, you recognized? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've appreciated all the comments and banter on this, and I, I keep hearing this term economic mobility. I want to remind our sponsor and our committee, the government has very little responsibility when it comes to economic mobility. But I want to tell you, take you down memory lane real quick since we brought up economic mobility. If you want to be mobile with your finances and be able to move, Tennessee is setting the bar in the entire nation. Nobody's getting it right like we are. What do I mean by that? I mean, we have a thing called the Tennessee Promise. We have a thing called the Tennessee Strong Act. We have a thing called the Tennessee Reconnect. What does that mean? That means if you want to better yourself and have economic mobility, we are making it possible for you to work hard go to school, get a certificate, 
and do something with yourself. And what we've done as a state is we've paid for the majority of that. Does that mean you might have to work during the day and go to school at night? Absolutely. But you know what? A lot of us have had to do that. I was raised in a single wide trailer. Raised very poor. My dad taught us to work. I started a business with nothing. There is nobody that's a victim here unless you want to stay a victim. You have the ability in Tennessee to wake up tomorrow and do something with yourself. And our government, the state government here in Tennessee, has made it possible for you to have economic mobility by putting yourself in school. And we're going to pay for the majority of it and get a license, get a degree, do something, and you can see that paycheck grow. Because people don't pay for just a, a person who can – we're not going to pay – CEO salary for a person who can flip a hamburger. We pay for knowledge. We are putting you in the position in Tennessee, no matter what age you are, to get knowledge, to learn how to do something and become a professional, whether it's being a plumber or whether it's being a doctor. We are doing things right in Tennessee. So just want to make that. If you want economic mobility, it's in your hands to do it. Can I respond, Mr. Chair? To the Hang on just a second. There was no question asked, sir. Uh, the question has been called. Can I make a final closing statement? Hang on. Any objection to the question? Seeing none, Mr. Sponsor, you will be recognized for a closing comment. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and with, with all due respect to both chairmen, I hope that you do vote for this bill. Um, and, and I just want to state that according to a 2020 study by the um, Sycamore Institute, um, Tennessee children are less likely than children across the nation um, to out earn their parents and to, and to see increase in their economic mobility. Tennessee has one of the lowest compared to our na nationwide counterparts, according to the Sycamore Institute. Um, kids growing up in Tennessee are less likely to climb the economic ladder than other American children. Um, and, and I can send that report to my, to my colleagues on this committee. But more than that, colleagues, again, this is I'm glad we had this conversation because that's what the purpose of this legislation was. Um, we, we, as, we as a state have to look at all of our constituents across um, my friend in Cock County. I mean, this is going to impact all of our constituents who are um, in, in, in stagnant positions. And, and I don't think it's a victim mentality. Um, but, but I think, you know, we, we, also, we constantly tell people to pick yourself up by your bootstraps, but we constantly are changing um, the materials from which um, these bootstraps are being made or, 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 or giving people no bootstraps at all. It, it, it is a, an unequal system. And while there are um, a few examples of successes overall systemically, we see that across race, across geography, people in Tennessee are, are struggling and are stagnant. And the pandemic exacerbated these issues uh, for our constituents. Um, and so I just hope that we, we will consider this legislation. Um, when you go to Walmart, when you go to McDonald's, talk to the worker, ask them, why are they there? How long have they been there? What is their hope for their children and for the future generations? Um, have conversation with working class people. I was just in Murray County this weekend, and I'm going to be traveling across the state talking to your constituents, because those are the people, um, not just in Nashville, but across the state who are struggling. And I hope that we can uh, stand together across parts in the divide and say that we want to lift up our constituents um, and, 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 and lift them up to higher ground. Thank you. Members, the question has been called. A reminder, we are not the standing committee on this. We can only recommend approval or disapproval. The bill is before us because it contains rulemaking. Uh, with that said, we have a motion before us. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we are voting to send House Bill 747 to finance ways and means. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. No. Nay. Nays have it. The bill goes out with a negative recommendation to finance ways and means. Members, that concludes our regular calendar. We have no business before us. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Non-debatable, we're adjourned. <laughs>